Hi everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today we're continuing our coverage of the launch of NVIDIA's new GeForce GTX 670 GPU. Next up is EVGA's version of the stock GeForce GTX 670. So let's we'll start off with a look at the box for some product specifications and for starters we have two gigabytes of GDDR5 memory and that memory operates on a 256-bit memory interface. Uh, the effective memory clock is 6,008 MHz, which gives you a transfer rate of 192.3 gigabytes per second. You also have PCI Express Gen 3 compatibility, so uh, if you have a newer motherboard of PCI Express Gen 3, that gives you some additional bandwidth. Uh, PCI Express Gen 2 or Gen 1, or Gen 2.1 users, I should say, uh, are still going to be just fine going with this card uh, because really you don't even saturate a PCI Express Gen 2 bus with current video cards. Some key features here on the back of the box, you get NVIDIA GPU Boost, which gives you uh, basically an automatic GPU overclock if the thermal environment permits. You also get adaptive V-Sync, which helps you not drop frame rates if your frame rate happens to drop below the refresh rate of your monitor. You also get NVIDIA surround technology. You can actually connect up to four displays at once. You can use three of them for gaming, and the fourth can act, act as a companion display to pull up web browsing or a, a communicator software or something like that. You also get DirectX 11 support, physics, 3D vision, as well as all the other stuff you see there. Uh, but next off, let's take a look and see what comes inside the box. So looking inside the box, we have an assortment of accessories and stuff. First off, we have a display, installation disk, and driver CD. Uh, it's, your best bet is going to be head over to the EVGA or the NVIDIA website to download the drivers instead of using the ones off the disk because these will, chances are, be out of date by the time you get this card. Uh, you also have an EVGA case badge right there. If you like case badges, you can put that on your case. Also be careful, video cards get hot and don't burn yourself. Also here's a GeForce GTX 600 specific installation guide there with some more information on uh, plugging in PCI Express power connectors, for example. Also have a graphics card general user's guide from EVGA, which you may have seen before, but this has sort of basic uh, graphics card best practices, installing SLI and that sort of thing. You also get a big old EVGA um, poster, which I'm not going to unfold because they've been using the same poster for a while, and you guys have probably already seen it. Uh, here's a, wait, it's upside down. Here's <laughs> EVGA enthusiast built stickers. You can put those on your case, too, if you like stickers. You also get some... Uh, actual adapters here for your power supply. So these will each take a couple Molex plugs and convert them to six pin PCI Express power, con power connectors, which happens to be what you need in order to power this card. You also need at minimum a 500 watt power supply. Uh, it should probably go a little higher than that if you uh, intend to add additional hardware in the future, but 500 watts minimum for an entire system with this power supply. And then finally here you get a DVI to D sub VGA analog connector. So here's a look at EVGA's take on the stock clocked GTX 670. As you can see, they've used the enclosed shroud cooling style design that uh, the NVIDIA reference design cards have used. It is a bit different from the reference designs, but uh, I'll point out some of the differences here, mainly the uh, design of the shroud. They have stuck with the um, distinctive short PCB, which a lot of folks are noticing from the 670 is, is it's a very short PCB. It's shorter than the PCBs you usually see on a higher end video card. So PCB itself terminates uh, just short of seven inches there. It's about six and uh, five eighths, seven eighths, six and seven eighths, that's what I'll say. Uh, the entire card is about nine and a half inches long, maybe just a little bit longer than that. And uh, one of the nice things about this shroud is that there's really nothing going on at this end of it. So it's, it's enclosed, you don't have any plugs sticking out over there. Uh, and it also means that as far as your case goes, you can actually butt right up against a sidewall or something like that and you don't have to worry about um, any ventilation problems. Uh, the cooling d itself is mainly handled by this blower style fan down here on the right side of the card. Uh, it's going to create some positive pressure at this end and it's going to direct most of the airflow across the uh, actual cooler which is under here which has radiator fins above it and then uh, mostly eject it out the back of the card right there which will take it outside of your case which is uh, ideal in most situations. You'll notice uh, there's a little bit of a gap, actually no, not on this side, that side's enclosed, but there's a little bit of a gap over here uh, near the power connectors and SLI bridge area. But um, speaking of power connectors, they're right here. Again, you need two six pin power connectors from your power supply to power this card. Up over here, you have a couple SLI connectors as well, right there. Uh, again, the card is, ca is compatible with SLI. You can do two, three, or four card SLI configurations if you have a motherboard that can handle that type of video card setup. 
also has a nice little protective rubber cover on it. Here at the bottom of the card, you can see uh, again the PCB, some of the NAND for the, uh, I'm sorry, not NAND, some of the GDDR5 memory, uh, and you also have uh, the GPU, which is located right beneath that sort of X shaped area right there. Uh, the GPU, speaking of which, has two clock speeds. It has a base clock speed, which is 915 megahertz, and then it also has that GPU, GPU boost feature, which can automatically up the clock speed of the GPU if the thermals permit. So uh, the actual out-of-the-box speed for that for the stock uh, cards is 980 megahertz. I've been doing some testing with the GTX 670s, and I can say that most of the cards are actually going to boost up beyond that. It's just going to vary based on your particular card and how hot the GPU gets, but it will let you maximize uh, the, the potential, so to say, of the GPU installed on your video card. Let's take a look at some of the display outputs down here at this end. And they have some protective covers, which I'm just going to gracefully pop off. There we have it. Uh, so you get a couple dual link DVI connectors here on the right side. Uh, the upper one here is digital only, so if you are going to use that analog adapter that they uh, use in the box, use it with the lower plug there. Both of them dual link though, so they do support higher resolutions such as 2560 by 1600. You also get a HDMI 1.4a output as well as a DisplayPort 1.2 out. Here is one last look at this cooling shroud. Uh, again, it's a similar design as far as the blower style fan as well as the uh, shorter PCB to the stock card, um, but they have done a little bit more distinct uh, actual design of the shroud itself. So as you can see, it's got some texture running along the entire top of it right there, uh, the, bl the black blower style fan right there, and then a couple uh, metallics. These appear to be uh, some really thin aluminum strips actually going along the uh, bottom and the side of the card. So in most computer cases, the card would, st would be sitting like that. So you get the EVGA GeForce GTX 670 logo staring at you. And uh, I, I don't think the metal has any actual cooling properties, but it does seem cool to the touch. And uh, it does give the card a very nice look overall. And that is going to wrap it up for this video. Once again, this has been the EVGA GeForce GTX 670. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and if you enjoyed today's video, please head over to our Newegg YouTube channel, and don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.